All right. Welcome, everybody, to another live online learning session. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today, we are going to be looking at Media Composer, um, specifically improving system performance. Um, before we jump in, I'm just going to go over a couple of points with each of you. Um, so first of all, this webinar is being recorded. Um, you are able to view these recordings on our website after the fact. Um, so that's avid.com. Um, if you're in the Zoom call with us, you will notice that your audio is muted. However, you are able to ask questions using the Q&A function down at the bottom of the screen. Um, you are also able to raise your hand if you'd like to let us know that you're out there. Um, please let us know where you're watching from. Uh, you can also raise your hand to let us know that you can hear me. That would be great. Um, and as mentioned, all these sessions will be posted to the website after the fact. Um, so today we have Marianne Post with us. Uh, Marianne is an AVID master instructor and a video curriculum developer with us. Um, she has taught a few of these sessions with us, so we're glad to have her back. Um, Marianne, whenever you're ready, you're welcome to take it away. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lainey. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. And today's session is about improving your system performance. Uh, so if you're kind of looking for that uh, quick fix, uh, this is not the session. Um, let me know if you find it. <laughs> I'd like to know it too. But I can definitely point you guys to lots of resources and some of my troubleshooting processes. As a creative, I am not an AVID certified service rep or ACSR. Um, I do pick their brains from time to time because they know all of it. So for us, from just trying to survive projects, survive uh, working in a client facility, that kind of thing, I can help you out. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen as I'm going to show you guys some resources today. And hopefully you guys can see my screen. My Zoom controls have been showing up. So just a couple things here as I tab across a lot of stuff. And just want to make sure that my audio doesn't stay muted in case Lainey needs to jump in. And then I'm going to hide my controls. Okay, so um, I actually built a slide for today. If you attend my sessions, you don't see a lot of these, but uh, here's what we're gonna be kind of taking a look at today as far as a system check and troubleshooting. So I, when things slow down, I like to blame the software or online resource I'm in. Um, and a lot of times it's not that. So uh, I will be pointing out my biggest calls for it as we go along. But some considerations, depending on the type of media you're working with and how much collaboration, that kind of thing, you'll want to do a little diligence as far as CPU speed and configuration, either optimizing your current setup or maybe you're uh, gonna be able to recommend propose a setup at a facility. Uh, that's a consideration. Built into that is RAM. We'll be talking about that. And I'm going to have a resource to show you guys to feel how to figure that out. Uh, system, how fast your uh, media, you can access your media. Um, and then just overall system performance. Uh, graphics cards. So a lot of that ties back into your system configuration. But the main system configurations I'm always looking at is my computer itself, the RAM, graphic memory and card, and then media drive. So hard drive performance kind of falls under that. Um, but some of that's user driven. So when I'm talking about hard drive performance, give me more of that. And then just other processes. Okay, so basically our system configuration, our media drives, and then what are we doing to bottleneck the system? Because some there's usually something along the pipeline that's bottlenecking it. Okay, so there's my uh, slide. And I'm just gonna hide that a moment and then I'm gonna hide Media Composer as well and pop over to Safari. So I am on the Mac, but I am gonna cover Windows today because I know you guys probably sometimes feel a little left out because I run all my sessions on the Mac. But uh, you, the, all the information that I'm sharing uh, goes to both. So 
in, I'm on avid.com. I'm just on their homepage. So this is where you're going to find your resources. I do this and Google. So you're going to see a couple things. So if you, when you're on avid.com, if you just go to the media composer section and support, you'll find a wealth of information. Because again, there's no one size fits all configuration, which you guys are probably already aware of. So in here, in addition to things like downloading options and activation, there's a whole search function. I'll search like Media Composer system requirements here um, if I don't just do a Google search and that kind of thing. But then there's down in resources. You can find all your documentation and configuration guides, so especially if you're proposing a system upgrade. This is where you can copy paste from. There's a wealth of guides. Um, and then another thing that is helpful in this section is in the compatibility. Just looking at like the version matrix, I work a lot with this with um, students and when I was consulting, just trying to figure out, okay, wh where are they? Or if I'm as a freelance editor coming into a system, what system do they have? What are the requirements? What are some of the bottlenecks I might run into that I went on my own system? So this just opens up the AVID knowledge base as you can see, and I can look at system setup from like 2021.6, uh, which is the latest build, um, which is where I'm at. But um, if I'm going on a system or if you have 2018.12, what are the requirements? So for example, I'm on Catalina and that would be a bad situation for 2018.12. So you can check that out. Um, I'm on Catalina, so I'm still okay. Um, it's in my to-do list, update to Big Sur, um, and it just, <laughs> life happens, work life happens, so it quite, hasn't quite happened yet, although I need to get on that because Monterey's coming soon. So keeping on top of things also helps, uh, which I really try to do overall. As far as then, I can also look at Avid uh, Qualified Systems. There's a link there, so that's what I like about that compatibility page. Because as you click through to all these, you'll find sometimes you can end up in a circle. And that's just because there are so many different configurations and it's not just Media Composer. We've got like Pro Tools and Sibelius and that kind of thing. And then you've got Nexus and, and that. So there's a lot of moving parts. So being able to kind of quickly find, uh, these are a couple of places that I do absolutely um, go to. And on this page, I've got things like I can look up uh, CPU specifications for 2021.5 and 2021.6 if you're on Windows as well. And then another thing that I really like to look at is feature performance. So that's on this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. So trying to figure out, okay, I'm just, getting my first uh, 16K project. Um, I'm not, but if I were, here's what I would need for that, which would probably mean I'm probably working at a facility. Um, I'm not setting this up on my own system, but you can see with like different features, like if I'm working on UHD, uh, you know, pretty high frame rate, 60P essentially with four streams of video, I'm gonna need 64 gigabytes of RAM um, on my system for that really to work. And they recommend 96. So is my laptop going to handle that? What, what build do I need? So you can figure that out and then just other connections. So this is a really great page. Now I do use UHD. I just used UHD video last week in a tracking session and you guys didn't see performance issues. You might've seen some operator error on my part or some interactivity between Zoom and Media Composer but you probably didn't see a lot of, um, there wasn't playback issues and that kind of thing. So it doesn't mean you can't use UHD. In fact, like if you're just doing one stream um, or if you're following an offline online workflow where you take link to your UHD media, transcode it to like, you know, DNX HD standard, something like that, do your edit and then go back to online you're gonna improve your performance greatly. And in fact, offline online is an upcoming session that if that's like a workflow that you may need to improve performance, that you wanna attend that. So it kind of piggybacks off this session, but it just gives you that information. Um, I'm not a numbers gal, so I don't have this memorized. So when clients or students ask me, I'm happy to direct them or give them information. This is where I'm coming 
to get that information because I I'm a creative. I don't have this memorized. So uh, you can get that. The other thing I'll do is either at this page here, I'll uh, do a quick search in the knowledge base if I'm here already, or I like to just come to Google or your favorite search engine and do a quick search for media. And I started, I typed it in earlier so that I have to do a lot of typing, but media composer system requirements. And what I love about this search is it'll oftentimes just take you right top search because it's, I think people search for this quite frequently, um, is media composer system requirements on avid.force. So if I come to this, it separates it out based on Media Composer um, Windows, so Windows guys, and Mac, okay? And some of this, like that feature performance, this is a second link that takes me actually right back to uh, this uh, page. Um, so you'll see like cross-referencing quite a bit. Um, they're not assuming that you're going to all these pages at once like I am. But yeah, just doing that Google search, you can get to Windows, because then you could see like the Windows OS compatibility get grid. And in my case, because I'm going to be demoing on the Mac today, the Mac OS compatibility grid. Um, and when I'm in here, it's got like, this takes me back actually to the, uh, the configuration matrix that we're looking at. What I want to do is Avid, Apple qualified computers. So as you can see, lots of cross-referencing, but I meant to click on Avid Qualified uh, Computers, and then at the bottom here, this PDF, okay? So if you were working on the latest system, this will help you. Otherwise, you'll wanna to go to one of those earlier resources that I uh, showed. Now I'm on a laptop, so they have a nice quick skip, but as you can see, there's several other options from iMacs to Mac Minis and that kind of thing. And it shows you like memory that you'll need. And there's notes too for various compatibility. So if I go to my laptop, um, I'm on the MacBook Pro November 9, 2019 edition. And this is pretty close to out of the box. The only difference from my system and uh, the base system that you can grab from Apple is I have 32 gigs of RAM, which is the recommended. And notice it can expand from 16 to 64. So when I was looking at that 16K footage and it's recommended 96. So if I'm working on that on this system and it's bottlenecking and processing slow, that might be why. Uh, so yeah, it's just, you know, media is just getting, uh, takes more and more bandwidth depending on what you're working on. So your system may or may not support it. Um, and things are getting faster and faster and faster, obviously. Okay, so there's some resources for you. As far as checking things out on your system, if you're like me and don't memorize all this stuff um, and visit it every so often, uh, how to check this out? What kind of RAM do I have? What uh, uh, graphics card? And do I have the minimum recommendation for graphics memory of two gigabytes. Um, I can check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide Safari here for a moment. And I'm also gonna hide my activity monitor because that's coming up. Okay, so to test your configuration, uh, you'll wanna go to that configuration on Windows. And on the Mac, you can just go under Apple and about this Mac. I actually took a screenshot because we are online and I know nobody would try to do anything, but uh, I took a screenshot of it so I could blur out my serial number. So if we go to about this computer or about this Mac, it'll bring this up. So we can see that for like HD video or basic uh, 4K that 32, um, gigs of memory is great. That's my one expansion. I've got plenty of graphics memory. Um, my processor speed's definitely compatible and that. If you're looking to, um, let me just hide this. I knew I'd have a lot open, which is one of my tips. Don't have so much open. Um, if you're looking to upgrade, you'll definitely want to go to the manufacturer's page because that even could give me more information. So earlier, I just uh, called up Apple's website in preparation for the se session. I'm just in their 
uh, laptop section because that's what I have. So as far as like media drives go for like a direct connect um, without anything special or even to set up for Nexus, um, I have Thunderbolt and USB 3. The drive I have connected today is actually USB 3, which the transfer rates aren't as fast, but um, I use them all the time in sessions. I'm not doing that massive project. And uh, I do a lot of short form and a lot of demonstration and curriculum building these days. So this is a fine resource for what I need, but having the right drive with the right drive speed and the drive connections and definitely a, a support rep can help you configure that if you need a lot of robust, but that's absolutely a media drive can be an impact. I'm very guilty when I do sessions with you guys of having all my media on my hard drive, which is not a good idea, but I quickly set up this lovely Zoom space here and there's actually quite a bit that goes on behind the scenes right before I sign on and logging a drive over sometimes just doesn't make it. So I always make sure whatever I'm using for sessions on my hard drive, not recommended, but for quick demos, yeah, it's okay. So really what are you using it for is gonna influence that as well. And then back to this feature recommendation, one thing I wanted to point out that I didn't is if you're linking, so AMA linking through the red plugin, or other plugins, notice the note, it's process intensive. So you may want to transcode your red media for the offline, for the storytelling part, and then relink later to the original media for a final finishing and output. And again, that's a session that is coming up. But if you're wondering, well, gee, when I link, sometimes it's a little slow, it's processor intensive. Okay, so that's kind of on the hardware side, OS side, user side. Um, let's take a look at a few things. First of all, drive space. So I have from about this Mac called up and I just put it on storage. Um, so we're not looking at all the details on my overview. And um, I am not the poster child for this. Uh, it is highly recommended that you leave at least 10% to ideally at least 20% of your drive open, especially system drive and your media drive. And I have so much stuff backed up that I need to do an archive and I have a lot just sitting on my system because I'm quickly accessing it. And that builds up, I have copies of stuff. So I just need to take a day or two because as you can see, I'm violating that rule. So it's on me uh, for some of my system issues if I have them. Um, because I have 69 gigs available on my one terabyte hard drive. I should have at least 100 to 200, which after a cleanup, I have far more than that. I'm just um, overdue. So check that regularly, um, help yourself out and definitely back stuff up. Uh, I've had, it, uh, like the past year, I did have two drives die. Thankfully I had my heart. That's why I'm also nervous about sometimes taking things off my hard drive. Um, so that's why I always have backups, hard drive, extra backup, that kind of thing, because you never know. Um, and then my media drive, this is a USB 3. Um, I'm doing good here, not even half. So we can go ahead and get uh, some projects going. And that even needs to be cleaned up in my two terabyte drive. So yeah, check your storage too. When that gets full, that can impact processing. Okay. The other thing which you probably saw floating around at the beginning here is activity processes, um, and I might have uh, deleted it, but let me call it up. To, you know, you open your task manager on Windows to check your processes, what you're doing. And on the Mac, you'll open the activity monitor, which you can just find in your applications. And then it's a utility. So I'll just hit you for utility and open this up. When I open this up, I'm doing good. <laughs> In preparation for this session, I wish I'd taken a screenshot of it. I tried to recapture it, but yesterday I was in development, which means I had Media Composer open, I had Camtasia open, Photoshop, I was communicating with my team on t Microsoft Teams, I had Safari open with my development software, which may means I had 30 tabs open there. And when I open this, there's this one very critical piece of information you wanna look at. And that's in Mac, it's called swap use. 
meaning it's using hard drive because it's run out of RAM memory. Mine's at zero right now. When I opened this yesterday, I was at over 300 megabytes. Um, and if I command tab, my, uh, my application options was straight across. I'm like, well, no wonder. So yeah, I might blame Media Composer or I might blame um, my authoring software or I might blame other you know, software. I won't say them because I don't want you guys to think that I'm bashing anybody. I'm not, it's me. Um, but I do have a screen. I tried to recreate it last night without success, but I did manage to open a ton of stuff and get it. So I was using about 111 megabytes. So that's definitely started heading towards uh, slowing down the processes. The fix, close it out. <laughs> um, don't have as much open as I tend to. I'll end a Zoom session and it'll be like three hours later. And I'm like, oh, Zoom's still open. Cause that's just, I just go. I'm very efficient in my workflow. I'm horrible with my assets. So yeah, don't, don't do what I do. Uh, it'll slow down your system. Um, so between that drive storage and that kind of thing is a big deal. Uh, wrapping up. So what else can you do when you're in Media Composer is another one. Um, so today my view is a little bit different. You're probably used to a little bit bigger view because uh, I usually change my display, which is a system preference. And I didn't today specifically for this session. Um, that's another thing that can cause issues. And you guys have seen it is when I don't use the default display, which is optimized for working with Media Composer. When I go for a bigger display, um, which I actually didn't mean to click on, that creates a challenge. Not so much if I'm just working on my own, but if I'm working with like another intensive screen resource, uh, like sharing on Zoom, that could be an issue. Okay, in Media Composer, I have like loaded a session I did last week on tracking. And right now, if I play this, um, notice you could see, I just, I muted the audio, but notice that my position indicator is barely moving across the stack. Now we did not have this issue last week. I was playing this, showing that I was tracking uh, Mima here without a problem. And as soon as I stop, hope, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but there's a red line here performance line there's one when you're having a taking a performance hit uh in the timeline your uh th one of three things is happening if you see a yellow line media composer is playing back at real time but it's not convinced that it can uh continue that if you see a red line it means okay my stack my quality my format somewhere in there is not optimized for my system setup okay um, so I need to make some changes while I'm working. Uh, so this is actually HD footage. So it's just got the stack of elements going on. I have the same thing here. This is a high res image that I used for a tracking example last week, and I'm linking to this footage. So solutions one, uh, which is topic coming up is I could transcode that footage. And then um, when I'm ready to online, I go back to the full res. Uh, so that'll optimize the system while I'm storytelling. Two, check your format. So this is UHD in the background, um, but do I need to be working on a UHD project? First of all, let's check where that is. I'm gonna go to settings. I just hit shift command equal. Um, and if I go to format, which is the front page here, front tab, UHD 24, I'm on that. The only footage, I have one background shot that's this. If I'm not outputting to UHD, I really don't need to be working in it. Also, if you are gonna be outputting to UHD, you can streamline the whole process by just going down to like HD for format. And then when I choose HD, which is actually what I was working in last week, I wasn't working in UHD. Um, this should change. So now if I play this, just that one change, it's totally smooth playback, okay? So changing your format, um, and then these red lines will go away. They might, yellow might pop up or something like this because I'm linking. Um, the other thing is down in the timeline, 
uh, you've got this video control. Uh, you might be able to go to draft quality, especially if you're doing something like in my other sequence. This is tracking. I always want actually full quality when I'm tracking. I want this button to be green so I see all of the video information for tracking, chroma keying, color grading, that kind of thing. But if I'm doing something like in this particular sequence, which if I call this up to you HD, this is HD footage, it'd be the same issue. It doesn't play back well on my system configuration. But um, if I'm just doing like picture and picture work, that kind of thing, I can absolutely take this down to draft quality and maybe best performance. And depending on the quality of the footage, um, that it can be really hazy and that gives me a headache. So that might not be the best option. So you'll have to kind of work that out. But just by making those video quality changes, that can um, help out a lot too. Um, and then if you're linking to certain formats, which second topic, transcoding that, that'll help. So between hardware, software, uh, all of that, um, I'm gonna bring up my Zoom controls here again and start taking some questions if you guys, if you guys have them. So let me just double check audio here. Yep, we're good. So Lainey, do we have any questions? Yeah, so I have <clears throat> I have one question um, from Carl on LinkedIn, um, and he's just curious if these same principles apply to much older MacBooks, um, and he's referring specifically to a 2012 MacBook Pro. Uh huh. Yeah, my uh, workflow as far as troubleshooting this, this is it's the same troubleshooting process. It's just uh, it, um, the capabilities are going to be a little bit. Uh, lower. Um, but yeah, also software uh, considerations as far as like what version of Media Composer you're working with and matching up the OS, that's big because I have clients who definitely auto update their OS. And if you're working on like 2018.12 or something like that, that can impact it. But everything I showed here with the activity monitor, the drive connections, the RAM, what kind of footage you're working on, all those resources apply to you too. Um, it's just because it's, um, and depending on what you're doing, that might be the perfect setup. You don't have to have the latest, greatest necessarily. You need to look at what are, what kind of media, what kind of projects we're working on for sure. Excellent. Um, I am actually not seeing any other questions on our socials. Um, okay. So I'd like to give those in the Zoom call a couple minutes to uh, add their questions. Again, if you're watching from within the Zoom call, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to submit questions. Um, <clears throat> and if you're watching on one of our social media platforms, you can leave a comment. I am monitoring those comments. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to give them a minute or so, Marianne, if you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to steal screen sharing from you, and I'm just going to look at the next sessions so that we all have an idea of what's coming up, um, especially since I believe you're leading these two coming up. Is that right? Um, I am, um, I am, the, I think the date might be a little off for the relinking from low res to high res. Um, that might be August 12th. Um, yeah, I am. I'm doing the August 5th one. I'm taking a break next week to uh, travel. So I'll be at the airport at this time. So I'm not doing one next week, but it looks like August 5th and then that'll be August 12th. Yep, that was my mistake. Sorry about that, guys. Um, <clears throat> but yes, yeah, so Marianne is going to be uh, leading the next two sessions, and that's August 5th and August 12th. Pardon that error on my end. Um, but if you'd like to join those sessions, we'd love to have you. Um, let me go back and just make sure we don't have any other questions in our comments on socials. Let's see, we have a bit of a quieter crowd today. Because we're all creatives and we're like, where's the where's the fix <laughs> yes <laughs> but hopefully you guys got resources <laughs> yes um, google yeah google those system requirements pop over to the advocate.com all of that yes yeah i think we're gonna call it um 
but yes, thank you all uh, for joining us, Marianne. As always, uh, you've been a pleasure to work with. Um, of course, I did just get two questions coming in, but I can always forward those to you if you'd like to reply to them later. Absolutely. Um, sweet. Uh, but other than that, um, we'd love to have you all join us at the next sessions. We hope to see you there. And again, thank you, Marianne, and you all have a great day. Thanks. Take care, everybody.